You know, I had said on every video that I covered about the U.S. Taliban peace deal that I did not believe the Taliban was going to abide, abide by the deal. They were going to use it as a smoke screen, smoke screen. Excuse me. There's too much animosity, too many generations of hatred, too much going on there. They are not going to agree to a peace deal. They're going to use it as uh, an ability to get breathing room. And it looks like I'm correct. And this is one of those things where I wish I wasn't correct. But, you know, I mean, come on now. Human nature and history has shown us how the future is going to react. Airstrikes against Taliban forces threaten to undermine a pact that may be already coming apart. Uh, and the airstrike is in response to violence by the Taliban. So yes, no, there's, there's no chance. There's not a snowball's chance in hell. And I have said it in every video. Kabul, the fragile peace deal between the United States and the Taliban appeared to hang in the balance Wednesday as the U.S. Defense Department announced its first airstrike against Taliban forces in 11 days and bitter disagreements between the radical Islamist movement and the Afghan government, as well as internal divisions in Kabul threatened to nullify the pact threatened it's it didn't have a chance in hell it didn't have a chance in hell you're making a deal with the devil people throughout the nation were holding their breath caught in a limbo between fear and hope as new violence erupted in a country long torn by civil war now i wouldn't just call it a civil war i'd call it all right outright freaking war for generations and generations and generations both U.S. and Afghan officials suggested that the Taliban were violating the pact despite an unprecedented telephone call between U.S. President Donald Trump and Taliban political leader Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar on Tuesday, after which Trump said the two had agreed there'd be, quote-unquote, no violence. And you remember what I said, those of you who remember, when I made the video when the deal came out and I said it depended on no violence, it was like them scolding little children. Okay, now, no violence for a week and you get your Nintendo back. And I titled that, Can the Taliban Earn Their Xbox Back? Yeah, no, nah, they're not going to get their Xbox back. It's taken away. They're grounded. Uh, there's no way. There's no way. There's too much animosity uh, between the Taliban and the local government, too, ma too much animosity between them and us. Uh, we leave, we're going to ca cause a power vacuum. It's just, it's, no matter which way you slice it, it's kind of a, a shit sandwich. In a series of tweets, Colonel Sonny Legette, the spokesman for U.S. forces in Afghanistan, said the Taliban had conducted 43 attacks against Afghan national forces on Tuesday alone. Yeah, peace deal, my behind. And I said it from the beginning. I didn't... Everybody's touting it up. Tim Poole had a video, it's historic, it's great, and I put up a video saying, yeah, no, no, I don't think it will work. I don't think they're going to abide by it. Uh, let's see, in response, he said, the U.S. conducted an airstrike on March 4th against Taliban fighters in Nair e Siraj, Helmand, who were actively attacking an well, Afghan National Defense and Security Forces checkpoint. This was a defensive airstrike to disrupt the attack. This was our first airstrike against the Taliban in 11 days. Can you imagine a life where going 11 days without an airstrike is like some big touting point? What are we going to do? You're kind of damned if you do, and you're kind of damned if you don't in this situation. Anybody that says the perfect answer is to pull out is bullshitting themselves because, and, and everybody else around them because then we're creating a power vacuum. Come on, now, come on now, how many times do we have to go through this same scenario in the same region before we pull our heads out of our collective asses and say, aha, it's not working. Meanwhile, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, his own future in dispute, not only because of the Taliban, who wants an interim government established, but because of a challenge from his election rival, Abdullah Abdullah, has cast doubt on the deal. The pact, which was signed by Baradar and U.S. Special Representative Kalme Zahilzad on February 29th, stated that the United States would work with all relevant sides on a plan to expeditiously release Taliban prisoners with the release date determined ahead of March 10th, the planned beginning of direct talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government. But Ghani said there was no commitment to freeing the prisoners. Okay, so no commitment. Basically, if they back out of the deal, we back out of the deal. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of prisoner exchange anyways. They are prisoners for a reason. Um, I don't know. I don't know. The whole thing is just, what do you do? What do you do? No perfect answer. Taliban spokesperson, yes, not even going to try it, said in a tweet on Monday that the deal will not go ahead unless the prisoners were released. 
An estimated 10,000 captured Taliban members are being held in Afghanistan, and around 5,000 Taliban prisoners were to be released in exchange for 1,000 political prisoners from the government side. Is that because they believe political prisoners are worth more than Taliban prisoners? That's a pretty large disparity, 5,000 to 1,000? Okay. Trump said that 5,000 U.S. troops would leave Afghanistan by May, and he was ready to meet Taliban leaders in the near future. But I don't think it's going to happen. I really don't think it's going to happen. Uh, so basically, as a result of the impasse, that date has been pushed back. The prisoner exchange has been pushed back. Uh, it is surprising, and this is a quote, it is, a, it is surprising that there wasn't a full understanding on this issue between the U.S. and Afghan governments prior to finalizing the U.S.-Taliban deal. This illustrates the difficulty and messiness of this process and the remaining ambiguity regarding the real and expected role different actors, a different role of different actors at each stage. Uh, and that is Shahrazad Akbar, the chairperson of Afghanistan's Independent Human Rights Commission. That's his quote. Yeah, no, no, there's no way. There's just no way. They're not doing it. And I said it from the beginning. I was like, yeah, no, this is a paper tiger, as they would say. No, no, not going to happen. Uh, and I said it from the very beginning. Yeah. It's too much, too much history. So everybody else was touting it up saying, look at this historic deal. And I was touting it up saying, yeah, but it ain't going to work. And I was right. And I wish I wasn't. But that's what I got for you guys on this one. I will see you on the next one. I love you guys. You stay informed. And give me some engagement on this video. A thumbs up, a share would be friggin' awesome. A comment to sus subscribe. I know I sound like a broken record at this point, but I'm trying to beat YouTube and the damn algorithm and let this channel grow a little bit because I enjoy doing this and I'd like to be able to do it. Anyways, I love you guys. I'll see you on the next one.